Do you ever sit and scroll through social media to look at other street photography and just feel like it's way better than yours? You compare yourself, feel inadequate, and then that ends up making you feel miserable and sometimes it even puts you off taking more pictures. That age old quote, comparison is the thief of joy, is so true. But there is a positive flip side and that's looking at the work of others with intention and looking for inspiration rather than comparison. Looking through the work by the masters of street photography should give you that buzz you need to go out and make more street photos yourself. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five of my favorite all-time street photographs from some of the masters of street photography. What's so great about them, what we can learn from them, and how looking at others' work can make you a better street photographer. So firstly is an image from the Magnum photographer Hiroji Kubota, and this is one of my all-time favorite shots. The composition is just sublime. All the figures are placed perfectly, with the bridge and pagoda also lined up to balance the photo out. And there's also a real sense of place, and I love the tone of the image. To me, you can learn so much from this shot, about framing, composition, timing, and visual storytelling. There's such a story here, and a real sense of community, and I just find this picture so inspiring. Every time I look at it, I just want to go out and shoot. Perhaps I also have an emotional connection as I spent a few years living in China, but for me, this is just a wonderful photo. Next up is one of the pioneers of street photography himself, Saul Leiter. There are so many incredible photos to choose from, obviously, it's impossible to choose the best one. But this particular shot has taught me so much about framing and how to compose a compelling photograph. You can see in these shots how I've been inspired by Saul Leiter and his ideas on street photography. Just how creative can you be with your compositions? Using big blocks of colour and negative space to mask areas, frame up the subject and really draw the eye in. This particular shot reminds me of Mark Rothko's abstract paintings, which I also love. I really appreciate the painterly quality to the street photography, and that is definitely something to play with in your own work. This picture is from Alex Webb's wonderful book, The Suffering of Light. All the photos in this book are masterful, but I've picked out one that, for me, shows you how you should use light and shadow to create a compelling composition. Alex Webb is known for capturing those street tableaus, incorporating multiple well-placed subjects in his compositions. But in this one, he uses negative space, light, shadow, perspective, and balance to draw you in. The two figures are perfectly placed, and the other splash of light balances out the photo really well. And there's just enough detail in the shadows to make it interesting too. Also, the uniforms that the figures are wearing lends a story and mystery to the photo. Is Alex even allowed to be there? Is he capturing a secret meeting? There's so much intrigue to this image and I just I love it. Street photography, like any art form, is so subjective, so I'd love to know in the comments who is your favourite street photographer, your favourite image taken by them and why. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please pop the like button to help it spread to more people to see. The next photo on the list is by Ernst Haas, the fourth image I'm going to show in this video. Again, Ernst Haas has a diverse range of incredible work, but while the other photos I've chosen so far are quite figurative, I wanted to choose one of Haas's more abstract images to illustrate the possibilities of street photography. It's a real study in texture and colour, and sometimes that's all a street photograph really needs to be. This photo to me is visually captivating and a joy to look at, and the more you look at it, the more you notice. Is there a face in there? How do the shapes and textures interact with each other? And what kind of emotional reaction does it give you? In fact, this photo and other shots by Haas and other street photographers has inspired my own long-term project capturing the textures of cities through ripped posters. The main takeaway from this image from me is that street photographs don't always need to include people. You can experiment with all the objects you find out on the street to create amazing work. And knowing you don't have to rely on people to make a great shot always gives me motivation to go out and shoot. And last on this list, but by no means least, is Harry Gruyart. Again, of course, he's a master of street photography. All the photos in this collection are incredible. But there is one in particular that I especially love. At a push, this might be my favorite street photograph ever. The light, composition, color, story, the little details that give a strong sense of place, it's all there in this single image. The timing is absolutely spot on. The two figures balance out the image, and that coupled with the way the light falls makes it such a captivating photograph. This image really teaches you that timing is so valuable because this photo wouldn't work one second either side of when you chose to press the shutter. And finally, this photo makes me want to just pack my bags and go to Morocco, stand on that street corner, hear the sounds, smell the scents, and if a photo makes you feel like that, then it's a pretty damn successful one if you ask me. If you found these images inspiring and you want to go out and make some amazing street photographs yourself, then be sure not to miss this video where I talk through my top six tips to improve your street photography composition. 